is episode 100 of Anytime, Anywhere. Like, the name of the campaign is like, everybody take four cards and make gods have mercy on yourselves. Let me know if you get any oh, reds, and then we'll start you off. Oh, please, no reds. Please, no reds. Hmm. No reds. Um, is Dreamland being used, Logan? Negative. Okay. Discard, redraw. Okay, I'll play my own Insta Hero as well. Wow, two different people got fucking Insta Heroes. This is yep. an auspicious thing. Although, for the two people that got them, as far as I know, they were still down four hero points from the last fucking game. So, yeah. 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 No problem. Um, is that all it for all the card play? Yeah, I mean, if you guys want to give me a hand, I got this. Uh, still learning. Skill plus five, skill plus 10, skill plus five, and a uh, special day. Hmm. Are you using a mic in your computer or something? No. Just checking because I'm hearing your mouse when you click. So I was like, you know, didn't know if like the mic was on the desk or something close to the mouse. No, I, I, this is a new computer I bought so I can go with the times. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> I noticed you're less blurry and stuff when you move in the camera. So well done you. I got handsomer. Um, uh, so anyway, <laughs> <laughs> right, you guys all wake up, you're in some sort of barracks. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, have all of your characters met each other in the past? Uh, who, yeah, who, no. who's, what character? I think I played with uh, Chris before, didn't I? Yeah. Not Dr. Sure. Uh, first time I've met John. All right, you, you guys instinctively know each other as their buddy. Uh, the same way it's you have that same feeling toward uh, the other as if you'd saved each other's lives several times but uh, you for the life of you you can't remember their fucking name off the top of your head until you introduce each other just because it's like something's wrong with your brain you're pretty sure um, but uh, let's see you guys all wake up you're in some sort of uh, barracks thing and it Seems that uh, there's there's other soldiers and such sleeping uh, in here as well. Although you guys have, you, you, it's like you've been given space. There's a lot of empty cots between you guys and the soldiers. And uh, two of you know where you're at. Uh, you are in, I believe, Alexopolis uh, near the Whirlpool. You can definitely hear the waterfall and such outside. Okay. The other one, well, you're you're somebody left the fucking water on full, and um, yeah, one of you uh, begins to sweat profusely because of the waterfall, and of course, sweating isn't helping. Just gonna go <laughs> ahead and uh, Alexopolis. Uh, yeah, I'm double checking here. Yeah, it is Alexopolis. Just gonna go ahead and cover my face with the pillow to try and drown out the sounds of the. Waterfall. That helps. While, uh, while the others maybe come and get me or something. Excellent. Um, yeah, you guys are all awake. Uh, you're uh, dressed in whatever you were before. You have whatever gear you did before. Have you ever been in the uh, the fantasy realms before, uh, um, John? No, I don't think right. so. Right. You've got two new tarot cards. You need a new card. Hold on. Your new tarot cards are the Eight of Wands and the Eight, 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 eight of Wands. Wands. It's about it. W A N D S. Okay, one. Okay. And the Five of Swords. Guessing you didn't play a lot with tarot cards when you were younger. No. All right. Now you mentioned before about the uh, this IG stuff. In the game stuff? Like, what? Uh, whatever. Uh, I, we were back, uh, give me a second. Let me give my brain a chance to uh, think what I was going to say. No, right. no problem. Uh, I'm, yeah, I don't know what 
uh, how you were dressed before, but you notice that uh, Doc Fulton is here, who you do know. He's dressed in heavy-duty adventurer-type clothing with, like, the sturdy boots and shit like that. Um, the other guy with him is dressed, uh, well, he's he's in bed, so it's hard to say, and he's got pillows pressing over his face. He seems to be dressed in a lot of black, but other than that, you can't tell. Maybe he's trying to eat the pillow. Maybe life is just too horrible to look at this early in the morning. Could be anything. You recognize, of course, uh, uh, both of them, Doc Fulton. How are you guys doing? Hey, Doc, man. How you been? And, you know. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, Doc, please tell me. Please tell me it was all just just a dream and we didn't do what we did. Please tell me. That's what she said, says a guard further down the barracks. <laughs> tell me about your mother. <laughs> my, my, my what? No. <laughs> tell me about your mother. My, what? Why do you have these fantasies about her? What? No. <laughs> well, I'm can like, you what? Turn, can you turn off the water, please? It's driving me insane. Wait, running water gives you fantasies about your mind? <laughs> uh, I'm going to roll up and just cover my face even more with the pillow. All right. He seems to be immobilized, Doc. Is this all too horrifying for you? Look, just... Can you, like... Do you have any earmuffs or something that I can just wear while we get away from the water? <coughs> I remember needing that. Uh, so what's the problem? I can't. Every time I think about or hear or see large masses of water, I uh, get flashbacks to the other night with you and I on the boat and all that and I can't deal with Flashbacks that right now. of yesterday? Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> I can't deal with it, okay? Just, do you have earplugs or something? Anything. Alright, you know what? I'm just gonna grab the pillow, tear it apart, like grab the stuffing from it, and just shove it into my ears. I'll watch. <laughs> you are dealing with the least sympathetic humans ever. You stuff, uh, you you make some, uh, uh, you 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 stuff shit into your ears and hope that it will drown it out. You can still kind of feel it in your chest because this is a huge ass waterfall, and it's super close. That doctor bag I had from last episode is that with me? Uh, were you carrying around a doctor bag? Yeah, remember I had that doctor bag with all that lab in a minute and stuff? Yes, sure. What does that do? Does that do anything? I don't even know what the hell this stuff is. I, I go to the doc. I say, yo, doc. I get, yeah. show him this bag. I said, do you know anything about this stuff in here? I look in the bag. What's in the bag? Your bag. Lab. What's in there? Oh, it's laudanum. Uh, laudanum. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's is there anything there? else in there? Just laudanum. No, I had a, uh, I had a scalpel. Let's see what else I had here. <clears throat> and a music conductor stick <laughs> with with blood on it, dried blood. Yeah. Let me put my lips here. You remember Lottenham, don't you, Chris? Old West. <clears throat> I never went to Old West <clears throat> very often. Give me a pharmacy roll. Know about Lottenham. I have a picture of a girl with skull balloons. Oh. Patient files and a yeah. paper with the triangle, the triangle symbol. Cool. How's that pharmacy doing, Chris? I don't know. I have to. I was finding it. 
laudanum. It's got a lot of cocaine in it and uh, stuff like that. It's it's kind of a, uh, de- they made it into kind of a depressant type thing though in the old West days. Uh, it, well, it's it's fairly addictive. Like uh, I think uh, uh, Ur- Wyatt, Earl Wyatt or whoever, the old cowboy gunfighter, I think his wife overdosed from it eventually. It takes a while. But um, in the old West days, it was kind of a cure-all for everything from toothache to colicky baby to uh, feeling a little down. <laughs> Might help on uh, uh, Pillow Boy, you don't know. I tell us, look, I, I, I could kind of explain where I got it from. This other place I was at, this hospital, Mutt, Mutt Ward. But you're more than welcome to it because I have no idea what this stuff does. <clears throat> mm. To me, that's just like a nice treat to keep Alex shut up for a minute or two about his Adam alcohol. <laughs> up to you, Doc. You should, no one should be using this. <laughs> this is not a good thing for anybody well, unless that's what they're really. into. Not really, no. Of course, Alex Alex Kinley may just fucking drain the bottle and ask for another one because... He probably <laughs> would. Mm-hmm. Alex likes laudanum. But, uh, yeah, it could actually help uh, take the edge off, uh, although uh, for for Mr. trying to eat his pillow, but uh, I don't recommend giving it to him too often. Unless you want to give him a new chemical dependency in Sandy, which totally up to you. I'm good with that. I'll, uh, I'll administer a small amount to take the edge off. All right. Give me a uh, drug tolerance roll there, assuming you want to take the medicine the doctor is giving you. It's good for uh, you, no? What, what's this do, Doc? Oh, excuse me. Something's it's, up with my... Excuse me. Go ahead. It's uh, medicine. It's good for you. It'll make you feel a little bit about, better about life. Oh, my stomach. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if he says so. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alex, what's your character's name? I'm sorry. Uh, Aeolus, or Predus, uh, as the people call it. You said it's a Alex, your, your character's name? Aeolus. But most people call me Freddy, so just call me Freddy. Freddy? Yeah. <clears throat> So I'm assuming you guys didn't venture to that hospital ward nut place? No. No. What are you talking about? Uh, last time I got up, I was at the uh, I was in some kind of psych ward with a couple other people and it was like uh, totally freakish. Oh, were you with another doctor? By any time? Uh, they had me wearing doctor stuff. I don't know what the hell was going on. People had a uh, Lunatic shirts on, and there was faceless nurses <coughs> and orderlies floating in the air. It's crazy shit, man. Oh. What zone was that in? Do you know? I don't remember. I don't remember what, what zone it was in. That was a pocket mm-hmm. zone. It's a small one. I show him the picture. Of the, I show you guys a picture of that the, the little girl. It was actually in, in the doctor's bag. It's a picture of a, a little girl holding skull balloons. What do you make of this? I don't think it's uh, of anything of interest or value, or it will come in later, later. Not anything that's of high import. Every room we were in had different uh, letters, like it was kind of scrambled i guess we had to we were trying to figure out this area that we were in like what it all meant something about shadows and stuff oh by the way doc um alex said there was a uh chris battery somewhere in kinleyville that we can grab and put into the flying car to help sell it. Oh, he has a Chris that we could use? Yeah, it's in Kinleyville somewhere. 
Doesn't say where I wrote. You guys been in this place before? The hospital or where we're at right now? The this barracks place here. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, this is uh it's been deemed MMO land. Which is? Uh it, this is the remnants of uh a multiplayer a massive multiplayer online uh game that's fantasy based. Okay. Uh, well, there's an Asia there for a minute. <laughs> But uh, do you remember the Shoggoth that was guarding the gate here? Or No, wait, you've never been here then. Never. Gotcha. Okay. I remember. <laughs> I bet you do. <sighs> Way too many functions on this show. Happy 100th. Yay! <laughs> so, uh, how'd you do on your... Ah, uh, great. Uh, found it. it definitely took the edge off. <laughs> you're, you're like, I'm okay now. <laughs> he's, like, yeah. he's like, everything's fine. So, yeah, you're a little... just a, He gave you a very mild dose, so you think you can function... And you wonder if your new hydrophobia problem may end up becoming a drug problem. <laughs> or if it'll, it'll, it'll lead to the drug problem. <laughs> it's like the opioid epidemic in the U.S. You know, it's like, oh, you know, I had a sporting thing and took some opioids and now I'm fucking hooked. Hooray! Thank you, Doc. Uh, Doc, Doc, can you, like, leave the water, please? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's some good shit, man. What, what were you getting ready to say there, John? I was going to ask Doc if he wanted to keep this stuff because I have no use for it. What's in there? The, the drugs? Uh, and what else? There was a scalpel <laughs> in there and, and, and the drugs. A, a, a conductor stick and some patient files. A paper with triangle symbol. I was going to hold on to the tri the, uh, the triangle symbol and the, the picture of the girl. The ah. triangle symbol. I look at the triangle sim symbol. Um, certainly. Let's see if it's um, which which one was it? The one with the circles inside the triangle, John? No, it was the one like the uh, S's, the back, the back S's, or something like that. Oh, he shows you uh, the the. Uh, um, uh, the same triangle symbol as what you use. He has one half of it, Chris. So is it the same? Uh, yeah, yeah. He looks at it with hungry eyes there. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, I made a small mistake on laudanum. It's a uh, tincture of opium uh, that contains about 10% opium by weight. It contains uh, morphine and codeine as well. And having personally taken codeine in the past, yeah, you're fine. Everything's fine. Everything's <laughs> great, man. Here's the Google on it. You might want to make a note of that, Chris, uh, because in the past, it was a very common drug for lots of things. These days we have better, but back then, <coughs> How long will I be high for, roughly? Well, you're not really high. You're just kind of numbed. Too. Yeah, I'm both, yeah. 
uh, which uh, considering how much water is nearby, you're kind of liking, but hey, give you a small dose of so six, eight hours probably. Right. Cool. Max. You'll be fine. So you make you feel around, I'll be fine. It's, it's there to make you feel better about life. Yeah, you know. <laughs> you that's have fun. The new opium addiction. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I'm not a drug dealer, yo. <laughs> so uh, the, the barracks uh, itself, there's other soldiers and such. Uh there's some that are sleeping. Uh there's empty bunks and such, uh presumably from ones who are awake. Um you can smell cooking food outside. Uh, it, it's kind of, they're, they're not really living rough here, but it's definitely like an army type of barracks. Uh, all the people's weapons and such, <laughs> medieval, we're talking like chain mail, spears, bows, arrows, crossbows. Oh, Logan, do I still have the rifle that I magically spawned yesterday? Sure. Yeah, I think you're about out of ammo if memory serves. Yeah, I've got two ammo left. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, what's your name? Sorry, new person. Hi, my name's Aeolus, but people call me Freddy. Freddy, I'm I'm Tom Tom. Tom Tom. Nice yeah. to meet you. So, what's your story? I have many stories. Uh, well, I mean. Mainly, I just wonder when are you from? Like, what year are you from? I'm present time. As in 2000? How, how yeah. present does this game go? Uh, well, that's that's the thing. Present time right now seems to be medieval age because everybody around you is dressed in medieval type shit. So it's a very loose, timey, wimey thing. What what year were you born in? Uh, I gotta look at my paperwork. Oh, um, real quick, can Freddie please describe what kind of clothes he's dressed in, and then oh, yeah. uh, then we'll have Tom Tom describe a little bit about your character if you. Uh, so I'm wearing full black kind of leathers with a jacket on top, fingerless black gloves with a pair of sunglasses that I usually wear. Um, short black, very clean cut hair. I'm on the skinnier side, but not like anorexic. It's kind of lean. And um, I have a sword on my side, and I seem to be carrying a fireman's axe. Just because like, I had a rifle. The fireman's axe is fucking and a rifle, yeah. big. Hung over my shoulder. And I'm sticking a card into Chris's hand. No, it's it seems to be a duplicate. Oh, okay. So, yeah, but that's brilliant, thank you, Chris. So that's why I gave you a card. Um, could you please describe what Tom Tom is uh, dressed like and stuff? Tom Tom is your basic uh, outdoorsman kind of guy, like a uh, woodsman hunter kind of guy. My picture on, on my thing is exactly how I, I don't know. If okay. I'd be able to. Yeah, that's hey. exactly what he looks like. I was going to say, at some point, if if you wanted to replace your and your wife's picture with uh, your your uh, Tom Tom guy, if you wanted to do that, you're more than welcome to. Same for uh, Freddie's picture. If you guys ever want to do that, then that'll make it very easy for the air players to go. This is what I look like in the pictures. Right. Kind of. Chris, I have no idea if, if we can get you with like one of those lamps on your head or something, like the doctor's thing. I could see that as Doc Fulton. Um, That's me. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, is it? Sorry. It, the evil look, uh, very reminiscent of Doc Fulton because he is definitely an evil doctor. So, uh, right. A guy comes in. He goes, good morning, gentlemen. Uh, would you like some breakfast or... Yeah, sure, that serving? sounds great. What are yeah. you serving? Uh, well, uh, he names off a bunch of very basic type of foods. We're kind of on a little bit of uh, field rations here. They don't have like prepackaged foods, so everything's made, but it's a combination of like uh, some. Uh, he says, well, we have uh, uh, the best thing that we have is there's some farter. Sure. Great. What? Farter. Farter. 
Okay. Parker, yes. What? What's that? Well, it's it's this this thing. It's about the size of a large cow. I've heard of cows, right, from my parents. And it has a big gas bag, and it moves around by farting. Nice. But the meat How is very. That salad? We it's we also fun. use the gas for the airships and such. Now that we've got uh, it open, I, and I I believe uh, that uh, uh, they're planning on. Uh, naming uh, uh, the new, if they can make a new bridge in Burlington and have a, a crane up and down to here. Um, I think they're planning on naming it after uh, the uh, uh, the Fulton Freddy Crane. Oh. Well, isn't that nice? nice? Hmm. Yeah, he looks pleased that you guys seem happy. All right, well, the way then. He marches back out of the door. I'm going to follow him, but if I see the waterfall, there it I'm going to do my best not to look at it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. No um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's pretty much like uh, a huge fucking pillar of water. It's bigger than any tornado or whatever, so it's pretty hard to miss. Okay. Uh, and it, it roar, it's constantly roaring and dumping water into here. You don't know where all the water goes, but it is. And plus, on top of that, you're on the edge of a fucking huge lake thing and a river. So you are literally nearly surrounded with horrifying water. I'm going to grab onto like Tom Tom's shoulder just so I don't <laughs> suddenly collapse, even though I'm not as bad right. as I would expect to be. Laudanum just seems to really be affecting him, Tom Tom. Jesus God, no cause. <laughs> so you guys go out, and the farter is surprisingly good. It's kind of like uh, beef; uh, it, it's been marinated a bit, uh, but it does have kind of a little bit of a stinky smell. So, good things and bad things. But uh, yeah, and they come. They have various uh, other stuff. They made bread and things like that. Yeah. It's it's a satisfying breakfast. Um, they've got stoves and stuff that they cook it in, uh, but they also have uh, they also <laughs> don't kill the cat. Um, they, also have, they also have uh, uh, campfires and such going. Uh, you notice that all of the guards are they they're constantly like uh, they'll move around and then they'll check. You know they're constantly checking the the uh, the giant uh, wall of water that's dumping into here from a whirlpool up in the sky, as though they're expecting something to show its ugly face. They Have seem... you guys gotten word to uh, the guys in Burlington that it's open and good and they can come back? We we've sent word, sir. Cool. Uh, Burlington. Uh, well, actually, no, uh, we haven't sent word to Burlington yet. We don't have any people there. Everybody managed to make it back down here, but we will uh, uh, probably have a ship going there. We've sent word to Kinleyville. It will take a couple of days for it to arrive there and then a couple of days back. We're pretty out here on our own. Gotcha. <clears throat> So, uh, Doc, did you want to go to Kennedyville to grab the battery or nah? To get to the car so we can sell the car that Jack Well, did. the butler said he'll try to sell it as is, but if we add the battery to it, it'll be worth a lot more. Yeah, but whose battery is that? It's Alex. Alex's. He said on the board that. We can take it. Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh. I guess that's a good reason to check those things, right? Oh, I mean, so yeah. much is going on on those things. It's amazing. One of these days. I'm an awful person. <laughs> okay, let's go do that then. Oh, so no this problem. is a witch. Tom, Tom, do you have one of these? And I point, um, to my wrist, does that have a little silver bracelet on it? Nah. No? Oh. Alright, that's next on the 
to do this. Do you need one of these? It's a communication device. You can talk to any of the other doors anywhere, regardless of what zone you're in. So, maybe. yeah, that's what I was talking about before. Yeah, earlier. All right, we'll get you one of those like right, soon. Cool. Appreciate it. You guys walk back down the well-trodden trail. It's kind of like a large dirt road uh, toward Kinleyville. The river is along you the entire way, off to your fucking right, the whole way. It just It's like it's following you around. And <laughs> I want to position myself so that either Tom Tom or Duck is to my right immediately. So I'm sure if somebody was to suddenly dump a uh, ice bucket challenge on you, you'd lose sanity from it. Yeah, sort of freaking you out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, when you get closer to Kinleyville, you encounter like uh, there's a couple of guards and they're keeping an eye out while there's like a small road construction crew who are busy putting in a road. They're they're doing it with like cobblestones and stuff. They warmly greet you guys as you go by. They seem to now know. Uh, two of your names, uh, and it's like, hello, Doc Fulton. Hello, Freddie. Hello, their friend. Tom. <laughs> hello, Tom. And you are? Uh, they they introduce themselves. It's a it's a fairly large road crew of like eight guys and two guards and stuff. Everybody's happy to shake hands and greet you and stuff. Um, yeah, they're just working on the road here. All the humans are super busy around here. Everybody's busy doing something. Where are we walking to Kinleyville? Uh huh. Straight that way. You're not far out now, they say. Also, <clears throat> uh, after one, on the end of your first day of travel toward Kinleyville, you guys encounter a, uh, looks like a small kind of um, slap together uh, inn. And uh, they're happy to give you free lodgings and feed you and all that stuff. Cool. Yeah. Nice. At, at the end of the next day, you reach Kinleyville. Kinleyville, you've never been here before. It's a, imagine a large, like quasi medieval town. Uh, most, uh, some of the buildings are super well made. Others look like uh, people who don't know how to make buildings made them. And mm -hmm. then in addition to all the medieval making materials, they, it looks like uh, they kind of scavenged 1950s windows and shit like that and uh, have, have added that into their buildings. It's almost like a cargo cult type of thing, if you know what I'm talking about, from Papua New Guinea. No. So, ah, well, it's a um, fascinating place. Uh, but it looks like they've just uh, tried to use all kinds of different stuff. Like you can see uh, one of the uh, buildings has like a car windshield as the windows. And you can tell it's a car windshield because the windshield wipers are still on it. Um, <laughs> stuff like that all over the place. Uh, there's also a lot of people dressed in 1950s fashion or medieval fashion. Uh, we're talking like with the the uh, bowler hats on some of the people and other people are wearing the medieval hoods and shit. And people are like, they seem friendly, busy. Um, everybody's going around doing their stuff. Uh, there's even a uh, kind of medieval wall around the place. And you can... After you guys pass through the gates with the guards and stuff, who are pretty much just waving you guys through and stuff, uh, you can see that the sunlight's reflecting off thin wires. That, like the highest building, is a little bit lower than the walls, and then there's wires over everything, like piano wires. <clears throat> so you, yeah, for whatever reason. Um, and where are you guys taking them here? Um. Well, Alex didn't say where the battery was, so maybe right. <laughs> maybe we can ask uh, Claire or Darius or someone if no they know problem. where it is. You guys march him over to the uh, probably town hall head guy thing, whatever, and you end up talking to a, uh, a lady uh, whose name is Claire. She's like the co ruler of the place, apparently. People are friendly to her, but they, she doesn't have any special titles like princess, queen. And like, they call her Claire, but you can tell they're respectful of her. And she's like, I have no idea where Alex keeps any of his stuff. Are you talking about me, ma'am? No, no, the Alex Kinley. Ah, 
Sorry, says the random guy. Mm. Then some other girls come in with like blue hair, attractive with blue hair. And one goes, is Alex back? And another guy goes, huh? And she's like, not you, Alex Kinley. And they're, she, the girls are like, where is he? He's not here. She says, ah. Where does, yeah. you, where does Alex usually stay with you guys? <clears throat> Oh, so it's the same guy who keeps thinking you guys are talking about him. Uh, wherever he wants. Um, he, pretty much in the home of any woman who wants him. Mm. Gonna... Does he have his own home here? No. He's never asked what? for one. Do you think he wants one? We could build him one, says some random girl. Huh? Says the guy who's also named Alex. What's the most uh, prestigious building here? Uh, you're in it. It's it's the the uh, the palace type thing, but Do it's you have not a really vault out. or something. A what? A vault, a safe or? Yes, or yes. Does and Alex have, have a... huh? space in the, the vault? Guy. <laughs> Same guy, huh? He looks <laughs> around. Um, no, says the lady and Alex. The different Alex here at the same time. <laughs> I'm going to describe the battery to them to the best oh, of my Oh, you want a curse battery. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. You do. You want one the size of somebody's uh, upper leg, a thigh size battery. The biggest one you have, yeah. The biggest one we have? No, no, okay. no. Wait. No. I, no? I describe them the size that would fit in the car. Okay. Right. The thigh size one. Got it. They, have, they bring one in. It looks – it's a big uh, piece of crystal. Um – it's it, kind of a weird looking, it's not like the normal crystal that like crystal therapy people do. It's more like the kind that you get when lightning hits sand. But it's about the size of somebody's thigh bone, uh, well, leg included. And uh, two guys very carefully bring it in uh, because it's a little bit heavy and a lot awkward and super delicate. And you notice that unlike the normal Chris that you're used to, uh, Doc Bolton, this curse is kind of multicolored and stuff. It's a little different than the regular crest, and you're not sure. Well, actually, you might be. You are a wizard. Give me a uh, – uh, what kind of magical theory stuff do you have? Spellcraft. Sure. You're thinking that with your with your knowledge of spells and stuff, uh, it, it, it might work, but it's it's kind of like you're going to plug in a different um, level of energy, possibly not a constant flow into something. It'd be kind of like going to uh, Europe with American appliance that didn't have its own inbuilt converter the way they all do these days, plugging it in and hoping for the best. Uh, having some sort of power converter type thing, which may not even exist, would definitely uh, help. I'm not saying you couldn't plug it in, but also with your uh, spellcraft, you are thinking, I don't know how to do that because uh, apparently it's not like a uh, battery. It's not like you just put it in and shit works. There's stuff that needs to be done. Probably a whole new skill. Good news for you though, if you do attempt to plug in this Big piece of Chris, which, by the way, isn't charged yet because they don't know how to charge them here. They just dig them up. So you'd still need to get charged, which is part of the super expensive part. Oh, okay. great. Yeah. Then if you tried to plug it in, then you'd probably be developing a whole new skill, which is potentially super useful for you, although it's a hell of an expensive way to try it. All you, all you know, Tom Tom, is they bring in a big piece of fucking crystal thing with kind of like some rough edges on it and go here you go with multicolored and stuff and they look at it like ah <laughs> this is uh one of our bigger ones so how do they charge the chris anyway logan um i don't know if you know did you ever find out With a successful memory roll of negative 30, because I'm not actually sure if you have that information. I took the Magitech class. 
Oh, all right. In that case, yes. See how useful going to school was? Pity somebody fucked up your school. Anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, right. Uh, having gone to Magitech class, it involves ritual magic with a large number of very skilled people, especially on one this big. Lots of very, very skilled people. And this is like the entire thing that those fuckers do is sit around and charge up shit. <clears throat> like it might only be a couple of guys, like three guys or whatever to charge up like the, the ones you put in your guns, the little fucking <clears throat> ones. But for something like this, holy shit, it's exponentially more people and lots of work, thousands of fucking silver go into it, etc. However, looking at it in a different way, if you didn't want to stick this into your car, just selling it should get you more money. Of course, it's a weird one. And so, you know, uh, questions might be raised as to where it's from, et cetera, because it's obviously different than any of the Chris that uh, come from the uh, gothic uh, post-apocalyptic San Angeles. So there could be issues. However, if you found somebody willing to buy it, it could be worth, um, if you put it in, it could be worth uh, possibly getting back up to level two in the uh, thing if somebody was good at bargaining, which you guys aren't because you suck. Yeah, but that's what the butler's for. Having NPCs roll <clears> things <throat> for you always works out well. I highly advise doing more mm -hmm. of it. Well, that's why I'm slowly learning how to do it myself. Yes. Um. The two guys hold it and go, and Claire says, is this what you wanted? She says, prompting you. Uh, kind yes. of. Yeah. They, yes. we'll, we'll, we'll have it put into a big padded box. Uh, it'll be easy for two people to carry. Do you have any smaller ones, too? Sure. Sure. What size? I tell them the size. Like, the, the size that would fit. Like, I show them, uh, like, the size. And it would be the size that would fit in a Magitek gun. Oh, tiny ones. Sure. We got lo loads of those. Really? Where do you have all now, this from? Now, also, Chris, you know that the little ones are worth about, like, if they were charged, uncharged, maybe five silver. Oh, yeah, I know. Okay. That, that's why I want a bunch, because I'm going to start trying to charge them, Logan. <gasps> You're going to try to do ritual magic that normally requires three people by yourself. Yeah. Well, we can help. I'm a fucking I wizard, know. yo. <laughs> Would he be able to charge my gun? Hmm. What kind of gun do you have? I had one to say with the, when I was with Doc, right? When we hit one. Was that were you with guys when I fought those spiders and shit? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh, you still got your Magitek gun? Yeah, uh, I mean, if I, I had the backpack and everything. Good enough. My ninja suit, the whole nine yard, yeah. Of course, everybody, everybody going to school wore a ninja suit because it's just. <laughs> Have, have you, do you have Chris? For, oh, I have. I actually have Chris for that. Hold on a second. Let me see. They go off can... to load that and get you some a bunch of small ones too. Roll, roll a uh, half of a D one hundred, Chris, to see how many small ones they can come up with for you. If you roll, if you roll uh, ninety six or higher, it's open ended. Good luck. Close forty five. Okay. Bringing 45 small ones should be enough to get you going, you think. Yeah, hey, that's a lot. That is a lot. So this is a new skill, or would that fall under the Magitech skill? Uh, it would be a new skill. Uh, you could uh, try using, actually, yeah, uh, charging them, installing them, all that brand new skills. Magitech is more of knowing what can and can't generally be done with Magitech stuff. Kind of a theoretical, like, what's Magitech all about? Can I would we... like to help him eventually with that. What's hmm. the name of the skill going to be? Uh, well, I'm going to wait until uh, you guys either okay. succeed or leave a smoking crater. <laughs> but it's going to be a write-in yeah. skill, though, right? Totally. All right. I'm going to play a plus 20 to write-in skill. You're going to do it right now? All right. Yeah. Would you? Uh, yeah. There's usually pentagrams and magic shit involved and stuff like that. But 
Fuck all that. Why are you well, okay, I'll that? ask the mages here. Is there where's the major ley line? Like, like I know about magic theory, Logan. I can put that shit oh, yeah. down if it helps. No, that's, that's true. But uh, the mages actually they dispatched a group of mages who are on a quest for the source of magic, Ta-da! and they haven't returned yet, so they couldn't tell you. Um, if they all returned. of the mages. No, not all of them. They've they've kept they've uh, left some of the uh, uh, mages here, but the mages here are very specialized in different things. They don't have a lot of general magical knowledge of stuff. So they don't know where like a ley line is or where a place of power is. Uh, place of power. Uh, they've heard that there there might be several around, but if there's one here, they don't think there is. But uh, that's why they dispatched people to go off and find that shit. Okay. Claire looks at the camera like, I just want to get back to governing. She looks can, at you not, can you not just use your glasses to find one? I don't know how that works. Uh, you know what? I'll pop a charge and just like look around to see if I can see anything in the air or anything or like big obvious thing. I doubt it, but you know, hey. Did you reduce your hand before? Oh, you haven't played that. Never mind. Uh, everybody else reduce your hand if you're not uh, Doc Fulton because he's already down to four cards. The rest of you have said smart shit, hence got more cards. So, um, yeah, you look around and the, the whole area is a little bit magical. But, um, yeah, you, mm, you're not really sure how, how this works and stuff yet. And also, I'm going to uh, uh, make life a little bit better for Chris. Pretty much, well, worse, sorry. Right now, it's an NPC skill until it gets figured out under the making shit. So I wouldn't pursue it too heavily. However, there's other stuff you can do with uncharged Chris. So... I had two cards play immediately, cards. Holy shit. What you got? Uh, one was um, a drop a uh, discard one piece of gear. Pick one that is a legitimate piece of gear, like something useful, not like a bloody baton thing, but something get, that's come up. Would I be able to get rid of that conductor stick? No, that's, that's the bloody baton I just literally okay. mentioned. No, it has to be a legitimate piece of gear, like something useful, something that's come into the scene that's been used. All right, I'll, I'll get rid of my ninja suit. Oh, all right. And what's the other play immediately? The other play immediately is, one second, is a discard all of your cars, do not refill your hands, sulk. There you go. All right. Bad, man. There you go. So, um, anyway, sorry about that, Chris, but there's other stuff you can do with these right now. Eventually, who knows, on these spell boards, uh, a system may end up getting born, but I don't know. It's a ways okay. off. Okay. Yeah. Essentially, it's it, charging, charging up crystals and stuff is the factory worker of magic. Okay. But if another way to look at it is every, if if you can get somebody to bargain, you might be able to trade in like uh, forty. You might be able to get like ten gun uh, uh, Chris for the forty-five uh, uh, uncharged Chris you have, for example. Okay. Okay. Well, you know. I mean, if, work. You, if you were to start doing a trade good thing, and if they were to take them, and if the questions, because there's a lot of awkward shit, like, where did these come from? Why are they weird? Is there special shit to be done? Do they work differently? All of those questions are unanswered. And you don't know either. And neither do the people here. They just find them, and they're like, these are mildly magical. We will put them in the vault, because we don't know what to do with them. Sure, that wait, makes sense. Wait, wait, wait. On the so, other Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 no. Just thinking out loud. Wanna... Right. On the other hand, give me an evidence analysis role, anybody who cares to. Uh, yeah. No. I have evidence analysis. Good. Let me see here. All right, let me do this thing here. Uh, mm-hmm. Refresh my memory. 
Yes. Okay, I got it. I got it. <laughs> I remember. Skill, yes, yes, pretty much, unless there's modifiers. <laughs> Skills. <clears throat> Find my evidence. Yeah. Once you get used to it, it'll take getting used to where shit is on the sheet and stuff like that. But once you get used to it, I've, I've seen very good shit out of this. <clears throat> it makes me happy. <sighs> well, especially for new people trying to figure out half, negative 30, all that shit. Don't forget your check. In this I made it by half. Nice. Uh, those of you who make it are, think, are now thinking it... Trading would be one thing, but if you somehow got the knowledge here on how to charge it, that would be a very, very interesting possibilities. However, anybody who has Magitech skill, which I think may only be Chris at this point, can roll that for knowing general shit about Magitech. I'll play a skill five. Why not? <laughs> not your skill plus 20 right in? Ah, no. all right. Verse <clears throat> concealed. Yep, it happens. Yeah, there was it was something important about that, but it slips to your mind right now. Okay, you could try again at negative thirty if you wanted. I don't think it'll happen, but or half, whichever you like. As you think hard. If he ends up succeeding on this, then oh. yeah. All right, good. So there you go. <clears throat> so Claire, uh, are we allowed to just take as many as we want of these, or is this just like a one time no, we're kind of we're, we're, we feel that they're valuable and useful, but we don't know what they are. But of course, for for your massive help uh, in the thing, we're of course happy to uh, uh, defeating the beast of the water. We are of course happy to give you this giant leg size super rare crystal and a bunch of these little fuckers. Thank okay. you. Okay, so. I'll let you know what these are. These can hold magical charges, like magical power. We are really disappointed to have given them away so quick, but yes, yes, he says. <laughs> um, okay, how? That, I don't know. It's a ritual magic that you have to cast over time, mm -hmm. uh, and you can charge these with magic, and then using the magic inside, you can power things. We would be um, interested in studying this. Do you have anything that uh, is already powered and stuff that we, uh, we could give our mages to look at and experiment with? Like, hey, example, Tom, can you give give them your gun? We can get you another gun. Yeah, sure. Right. She she says, uh, uh, Kim. Guy comes over. He says, yes. Uh, can you take this to the uh, mages and have them study its operation? Warn them it is a gun. Yes, he says. He takes she she gives him the fake gun looking thing, and he takes it off to mages. Actually, with uh, never mind. I was gonna say with my different build and repair pistol skills, could I help them to understand how it all works a little bit better? Because I have Magitech, I have Alien, I have shit. I have like three different build and repair pistol skills. <laughs> What's what's the oh is the third just normal pistol? Yeah. Uh, actually, only your Magitech is really applicable. Uh, do you guys want to all go off with him to visit the mages? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. No problem. They take you to the most crackpot, ready to blow themselves up people that they have available. <laughs> They're like gnomes, aren't they? <laughs> they actually do have a gnome, a female gnome, who is their head. Um. I'm not even kidding. I got a picture of her right here. Hold on a second. And I am. D-I-Y-M-M-O. There we go. And by the way, John, could you try yeah. moving your mic above your nose? Yeah. Let's see how that works out. Because I, 
Let's see, you guys should be able to see a picture of Claire. And there's some other people around. Actually, you don't see him, which is good for you. Which one's Claire? Claire is the female that has the word Claire above her okay, picture. Okay, gotcha. Let's see it. Goes <laughs> out of view. No problem. And uh, I'm uncovering Janet, which is fortunately not quite a sand loss. But, yeah, <laughs> there she is. She is a female gnome. She is one of their, their techie type mage put shit together people here over uh, to the uh, right of the top of the page. Mm -hmm. So, uh, right. Uh, give me a magic tech roll to explain this in a fashion that anybody will understand ever, Chris. All right, hold on. As opposed to just picking it up and shooting shit. <laughs> this is how it works, you pieces of shit. And of course, with the Magitek pistol, the first round is basically activating it, and it makes a loud, annoying whine sound. Then you can start blazing away. Sure, I'll toss my. Hold on, where is it? Oh, here, I'll put you back in the card and discard area. Do, 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 do. There you go. Wow. All right. He, he talks at length. The mages take notes and uh, call in other people. By the way, you noticed something kind of unusual here, Tom Tom. At least half of the people, both male and female, seem to be named like Alex, Alexa, Ken. Kinley, Lee, etc. All variations of the name Alex Kinley for some odd reason. <laughs> it is a little fucking creepy. There's like three Alexes here, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, yeah, they uh, they study it and they are fascinated by it. Um, they're like, who knows how to how to charge these things? We can uh, plus uh, if we can if we can figure out and why is this Chris different than ours? If we can find a way to make this work, this could revolutionize things here. Oh, I, you, I understand that. Could you bring uh, a bunch of people from wherever these come from to here to teach us? Probably well, why not. not? Well, why um, not? They, they don't travel well. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but... Shit. Well, can we go there and learn? We can send representatives. You know what? Since you have traveled from somewhere else, you may be able to. Uh, we are all Doras here. Oh, you that that's what I was talking about. Because if you're yeah. not a Dora, you can't travel. No, no. So, no we're not sure about the kids, but the original surviving founders that Alex Kinley freed. Alex Kinley, says somebody in the background. Um, you know, we at least the, the originals could travel. Is it safe there, wherever this came uh, from? Yeah, kind of. Ah. Well, then. Ah. <laughs> they, they're it's not bad. Sale. No, it's not bad. We have a place where you could stay. Yeah. Oh, lead on, they say. Uh, uh, we'll, We'd we'll, have to get there we'll, using Clems. <clears throat> okay. We'll send three representatives, some of our best and brightest. The the thing is, I don't know if they'll teach you for free. Oh. Uh, well, we'll uh, see, we... that would, if we bring more of these crystals, the crystals could buy you guys teachers. Well, we'd rather just bring gold or something. I mean, uh, if you got dude, gold, that'll work too. They produce a bunch of gold. Yes, yes, we do. We are well funded here. We, we, uh, this may be the breakthrough that we need. Okay. Right. They go to Clems with you. Uh, essentially, it's pretty easy to get in there. You guys just have to. Uh, break your team apart to transport them with you since uh, they've never been there before. But uh, easy cut too. You guys are in the 
Uh, partially burned white dove. Have you been to the uh, gothic post-apocalyptic zone before, Tom Tom? Nope. Holy shit. Always All a right. card. No problem. More tarot cards arrive for some fucking reason you can't figure out. The High Priestess is the name of one of them. High Priestess. And the Four of Cups. You have no idea what these cards are or why they're important, but they keep showing up. Kind of like flyers from fast food places. Nobody knows where they came from or why, but they keep showing up. 